fractions and decimals part two. Now, sometimes we want to change our decimals to fractions. And this is actually even easier because it doesn't really involve any sort of division at all. All you need to do is just remember what these different place values mean. If I have here, this is the tenths place, the hundredths place, and the thousandths place. So I have one tenth, three, uh, three hundredths, and seven thousandths. So one way of thinking about this is just I have 137, and I have thousands because that's where this this part is here. So I just write. And sometimes what I just like to do is I like to count one, two, three zeros is how many zeros I need underneath because I've got to the seventh place. Now here, this would be as a decimal, five whole pieces. So we have five and then 26. And remember what I just said about the adding the zeros underneath one and then two zeros because that makes sense because this would be the hundreds column. And here, even easier, six tenths. Now if you were to ask to order these from least to greatest, the easiest thing to do is really just use a calculator because that's something you're going to have access uh, going to be it's going to be accessible to you. And you're basically going to go ahead and divide it out. And when you do that you have to figure out how this how this works. It's very, very simple to do because what ends up happening, you just convert everything to being instead of the what we had before, we're going to convert everything to being now um, decimals. And then decimals are really easy to compare. And then when you compare them, it's really pretty simple. So if for two thirds, I know that that's actually going to be 0 0.6 with the vinculum over the top. Then I have 0 0.67. So that's bigger than this. Now five divided by nine is going to be 0 0.5. Point five with a vinculum over the top. That is 0 0.58. And then I have 7 divided by 12. That's going to be 0 0.583, continuing on forever. Now, one really important thing to understand in with using a calculator. Because now we've got this all set up, it's easy to see this one. Let's see here, this one's the smallest. So we'll go from greatest to least. So this one's the biggest, second biggest, third biggest, fourth biggest, and, th and the smallest or the fifth biggest. Now one really important thing to understand about the calculator is that the calculator only has a certain amount of places to show on the display. So with this problem here, what's probably going to end up happening is if you divide two, by three, you're probably going to end up with something that goes ahead and looks like this. Goes to the edge of the calculator, and then it changes that one to a seven. Now, it's a repeating decimal. The reason why it did that is it's going to go on forever, and it wants to be as precise as possible, so it's changing that finest six, and it's rounding up to a seven. And the same thing happens for this five, in a calculator, it would be five, 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 and then a six because it wants to round up that last one because remember the rounding rules, what we look at is we look at the next, it, it would love to be able to show the entire thing, but it can't. So it's going to go ahead and chop it off at this display point right here. And yes, it would keep going on forever. And so it looks at the next one over here. So the five there, it's greater, five or greater. So we have to change this one to a six and ditch that because that's not, we can't see that. And we're done.